Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? It's your boy Quan, and I am here to give you the recap. Week 13, and then give you the update for the playoffs. Okay, let's go Dirty South. Now, our first matchup is Too High for TV versus the Uptown Scrippers. Now, according to projections, this wasn't going to be a close matchup, but both of these teams were going to do some scoring. Okay? And the way that the score ended up, uh, the margin of victory is close, about the same, and both of these teams scored much higher than they were even projected. You know, now with players, you know, like Blake Bortles, who gives you 45 plus points, Ben Roethlisberger, who gives you 44 plus points, you know what I'm saying? You got tight ends scoring more than 12 points on each team. You got wide receivers that are double digits. You know, this is a high scoring affair, as they say. But. When it came down to it, the Uptown Scrippers came out on top, 167.06 to 147.98. Now, I don't know where Too Hot for TV could have done much better, you know. Maybe in the flex spot, he could have probably put Ted Jen in there, you know. But, hey, Jen's been kind of inconsistent. You got to go with how you feel. And sometimes that's not good enough. And it wasn't good enough in this matchup. Dove to the Scrippers. Next matchup we have another nice one. Kind of went the way it was projected. King Street Wildcats versus the A-Town Jags. You know, the battle between the fierce felines. You know what I'm saying? Now. Both of these teams did well. I mean, when you've got Brady on your squad, it's hard to do bad, especially when he gets you more than 40 points. You know, Aaron Rodgers, you expect him to do well. You know, he got close to 30 points this matchup. You know, but when it comes down to it, you either win or you lose, right? Okay. This time... The win goes to the eight town Jags. The score was 144.98 to 123.12. Now, as far as the Wildcats, not sure if they could have done much better. Uh, maybe on the running back squad, you know what I mean? Instead of, you know, Shane Vereen, you know, you could have stuck with Mark Ingram, you know, even though he goes down. He got 15 plus points. You know, the margin would have been a little bit closer. You could probably finagle a couple things here and there. I'm not sure. But, you know, your, your squad played pretty good. You know, can't take anything away from that. But, the Jazz squad played that much better. So, now in our ma next matchup, we've got Davis' team going up against those Rough Riders. And, hey... According to the prediction, David's team was going to win. Okay? Coming into this matchup, you just never know. Right? But, the prediction was right once again. David's team comes through with the victory 129.74 to 84.94. Now, let's see if the Rough Riders could have done a little something to make their... Uh, chances at victory a little bit better. Well, they could have did a little better with their um, running back squad. Okay, instead of Rashad Jennings, who goes against you know the Jets defense, who's a, that's a pretty good defense to go against. You really don't want to you know put in your running backs who's going up against them most times. You know what I mean? He had she had Frank Gore, I should say. Sorry about that. Who got 15 plus points and Matt Forte who got like 18 plus points. You know what I mean? There's your running back squad. Could have picked either one of them. 
I know things wasn't that hot in the tight end position. Uh, I don't know if there was too much more you could have done to get that, you know, about 45, 46 more points that you needed to win. So, you know, you did what you could. Team didn't come through this week. Dub goes to David's team. Next matchup, we've got D to the U to the K to the E. Heavy hitters going up against Fiddy. Now. I know both of these managers are very active in the smack chat, and, you know, hey, Fiddy was already projected to win by 20 points, you know what I'm saying? So, the projections are also, have been spot on this week, spot on, because Fiddy comes through with the victory, not one by no 20 points now. Them Duke heavy hitters, they be playing now. They be playing. I think the margin of victory is more closer to around five points. And, hey, I'm wondering if they could have made a difference with their lineup. Let me take a quick look and see if they could have done something. Uh, you know what? Chris Irie didn't do like he was supposed to do. He cheated you out of seven points, which that probably would have got you the victory. And if you would have put, ooh, what's his name? If you would have put Ware in, the running back from Kansas City, who's behind um, West, you would have been real close. Not sure if you would have got the victory, but really close. Like I said, 112.74 to 107.90. Fiddy gets this win, baby. Next matchup, we've got those mobsters from the Valley going up against the catch number 13. The catch has been doing their thing. We all know they in second place according to Yahoo. Not with the records, but hey, what you gonna do? You can't, you know what I'm saying, go against, you know, what the site says, I guess. Especially when it comes to playoff week. And you will see what I'm talking about going forward. Now, but in this matchup, it looks like the number ninth ranked team beat the number two ranked team. And I don't know if they even paid attention to the lineup. Just figured they were going to go ahead and make it to the playoffs. Anyway, they were already projected to lose against the Mobsters. And once again, the projection was correct. Valley Mobster comes through on this one. 121.94 to 113.52. One thing I'm noticing in the catches... Um, lineup, they've got Andre Ellington in the lineup, which I don't think he played. It looks like he was out. And as far as points on the bench, uh, didn't really leave any. You know what I'm saying? The linebacker, oh, Sean Lee from the Cowboys could have put him in there. Got to do an extra, what, 10 points? He would have played him versus old boy from the, uh, from the Rams. You know, as a matter of fact, you probably would have won. But that's neither here nor there. What's important is that the mobsters from the valley came through with the victory. All right, next matchup, we've got Black Rain going up against the Delta Dogs. Black Rain basically shows why they are in first place. They come through with a victory. I don't know if Delta Dogs could have done anything more. They probably need another, what, 30, 31 points. Well, you had the Cincinnati defense who gave you 25 points versus New England. That's another 21 points. Uh-oh. And you got Navario Bowman on the bench. But really, your linebackers, your, your defensive players did they think. So wasn't really too much you could do, Dogs. You know, this one was just... In the stars, I guess. You know, their projection was that Black Rain was going to win anyway. And hey, with the projections being spot on this week, whoever they projected to win is the one that won. Congrats to Black Rain. And that is that. The last and final matchup we've got Christy Love's team versus the A Town Dominators. Now, this matchup has been causing quite a stir in the Smack Chat. There have been coaches who've been calling for the removal of the coach for the ATL Dominators. I personally do not agree. 
pay. Like I said before, and like you all know, any given Sunday, anything can happen. And on last Sunday, that's just what happened. Now, I've been talking this whole broadcast about how the projections have been spot on, right? Now, this is the exception to the rule. Because A-Town Dominators should have won this. You know, they had a 20-point, you know, margin of victory projected by the website. But, hey, in fine fashion, like Christy Love's team is known to do from now and then, you know, hey, they'll put a surprise on you and they will cause an upset. This was one of those weeks. And I don't know what happened to the Dominators who have been dominating now, you know, I should say and mention. <sighs> Jarvis Landry didn't even get a point. Eddie Lacy didn't even get a point. So many teams, so many players on the Dominators didn't even break double digits. You know, their tight end didn't even get five points. Neither did one of their star running backs, Giovanni Bernard, you know. So when you have players who play at this level, it's a recipe for destruction. Now, on the other hand, Christy Love's team, who I think you all know, it's no secret they are a Panthers fan, had Cam Newton as their quarterback. And I think she keeps him in there. I don't even know if she plays the backup. Who the hell is her for backup? Eli Manning? Yeah, yeah, she plays him from time to time. And he does okay. Now, but Cam got her 50 points. That's more than half of what the Dominators scored. Okay? So, let me put it to you this way. If Christy Love's team only consisted of, let's say, Cam Newton, right? And let's say Richard Rogers, the tight end from Green Bay, and took everybody else out of her lineup, she would have still won. That boy got 22 plus points. Not to mention Buck Allen from the Ravens got 24 points. The Philadelphia defense got 37 points. And even though they could have done even better by putting, how you how do you sit Odell Beckham Jr. even against the Jets, you know secondary because you know Darrell Revis Revis Island has been closed. You know what I'm saying? It's out of season. Ain't nobody visiting the island as of lately. Okay, but hey, regardless of all of that, I know I'm going into a lot of this, that, and the third and the other. <sighs> 179.54 for Christy Love's team to 66.26 for the ATL Dominators. You want to talk about a large margin of victory? We're talking over 113 points between the two. You know, a lot of people have been saying that's ridiculous. They've never seen anything like this. <laughs> I think that the coach for the ATL Dominators needs to be fired. He should be banned from the from the league. He shouldn't be allowed to play in here anymore. Even the worst teams don't get beat out like that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, but anyway, hey, 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 hey. Let's calm down, everybody. You know, as well as he did, and all the teams that he ranks higher than, and I'm ashamed to say, including Too High for TV, who usually does a lot better than they're doing this year and should have because of the draft. You know, it was a good draft, but, you know, y'all kind of... Anyway, I'm rambling again. But anyway, let's get into the standings, Let and then I can tell you who's in the playoffs, okay? Now, in first place, we all know him. I mistook him for last year's champ, and you could probably tell why. He's been on a blazing tear this year, tearing up all his opponents. I'm talking about Black Rain with a record of 10 and 3, first place number one. Now, I have been the one to change up all of the standings due to everybody's records, and I think that the commissioner may need to look at that. 
when it comes to the rankings within the leagues, I think he the setting in the league must be set to um, division wins and champions. That determines your rankings um, more so than the overall standings with all players throughout the league. I think that really should be changed because when you have records of nine and four and eight and five, you really should be ranked higher than a team that's seven and six. Okay, that's the end of that. Let's get into the rankings according to Yahoo, which places everybody in the playoffs for this week. Now, we already know who's in first place. Second place, the catch number 13, record of 7 and 6. They are the division leaders in the Terminators division. Okay? Now, third place, we've got A Town Jags with a record of 9 and 4. Fourth place, Duke Heavy Hitters with a record of 8 and 5. In fifth place, Fiddy with a record of eight and five as well. In sixth place, with a record of seven and six, the Uptown Scrippers. In seventh place, also with a record of seven and six, the ATL Dominators. Okay. In eighth place, David's team with a record of seven and six, Valley Mobsters. In ninth place, with a record of seven and six. In tenth place, also with a record of seven and six. Rough Riders in 11th place with a record of 5 and 8, the Kings Tree Wildcats. In 12th place, also with a record of 5 and 8, Christy Love's team, despite them in that place, had a very, very great game this week, I must repeat. Okay, now, in 13th place with a record of 4 and 9, we've got Too Hot for TV and down in the basement, with a record of 3 and 10 in 14th place, the Delta Dogs. Okay, now, according to our league standings, the top six teams move on to the playoffs. And if you remember what place I told you that your team was in, if you were in sixth place or above, you move on to the playoffs and the chance at becoming the 2015. Dirty South Fantasy Football Champion. Okay? Now, as far as the playoffs are concerned, this is how it's going to go. Okay? Now, we've got the first place and second place team, you're on a bye week. So, Black Rain, the Catch 13, you can relax and watch your competition tear each other apart. Okay? Now, after the second place team, we've got the third place team going up against the sixth place team. Okay, so that means the A-Town Jags will be going up against the Uptown Scrippers. Okay, and then after that, you got the number four team, number five team, they're playing against each other. Okay, so Duke Heavy Hitters will be going up against Fitty. Okay, now. As far as how the games are progressing, you know, up until this point, Duke heavy hitters and 50 are already throwing points up on the board. And right now, the heavy hitters are ahead 14 to 12.60. According to the predictions, 50 is projected to win. 50 is projected to win by about 10 points. Okay, now. The A-Town Jags are going up against the Uptown Scrippers, and the Scrippers already have 16.20 points on the board, okay? The Jags don't have anything as of yet, okay? So, now, one thing to keep an eye on, this playoff match between the Heavy Hitters and 50 is just a rematch from last week. These teams just play each other and are playing each other again. Now, will Duke heavy hitters come out on top this time? Will 50 do anything different to his winning recipe of players to keep his winning streak alive? You know, hey, I don't know if, you know, because like I said, it wasn't really too much that, you know, the Duke heavy hitters could have done to you know, get more points. So, what do you do? You know what I mean? 
Are the matchups this week going to change anything? Okay. Well, we'll see what's going to happen. Okay. Now, I wish you all luck. I know that there are also consolation games going on this week, and I would report on them, but you all know that it's not really, you know, it doesn't really make that much of an impact on the league, on the consolation teams, because you're not going to get a prize for fourth place, for really for seventh place, eighth place, not, you know, all that stuff. And if there was a prize, if there was a, you know, winnings kitty or anything like that. You know, none of y'all will win it anyway. So, I mean, we're going to get into the playoffs and we want, we're trying to see who's the champ. Okay? Now, and I will be placing the video just to get into a little bit about, you know, what the champ could possibly get next year. Okay? But I'll check you all later and I wish you all good luck. Peace.